Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله أمر بعد ثوره Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and we seek His help. And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and the consequences of our actions. Whomever Allah guides, none can misguide. And whoever is misguided cannot be guided except through Him. I bear witness and I testify that there is no God except Allah. And I bear witness and I testify that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. As to what follows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has advised us and commanded us to be conscious of him when he says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Dear Muslims, as we're all aware, today is the last Friday of this year's Shawwal, Sha'ban. And within two, three days, the day of Ramadan are going to begin. And as quickly as this entire year has gone by, so too the month of Ramadan will go by. Today, I am giving you a khutbah. And I am telling you Ramadan is around the corner. And within the twinkling of an eye, I'll be giving you, if Allah wills, a khutbah reminding you of the Ramadan that has just passed. Such is the reality of life, the swiftness by which we go through time. And the day before Ramadan, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stood up and he gave a moving lecture. And he told the Sahaba, as was reported in the books of Hadith, that, O Muslims, a blessed month has come to you. Atakum shahrun mubarak. A blessed month has come to you. Allah has ordained that you fast during the day 
and he has encouraged that you pray during the night. In it is one night that is better than a thousand months, that is better than many lifetimes. In it, every single night, Allah opens the doors of mercy. And during it, Allah has shut the doors of punishment. Jannah has flung open its doors. Jahannam has shut its doors. In this month, he told us, Allah has chained up all of the evil shayateen. And on every single night, وَلِلَّهِ عُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلَّ لَيْلَ Every night, Allah will free many people who were destined for Jahannam. Allah will free them because of this month. And the excitement has been building up. And we have been giving khutbas and durus and lectures and khatiras. And all of us are looking forward to this month of Ramadan. But how about that person who looks around and he sees the excitement building and he sees his brothers, his cousins, his co-workers, his colleagues that are Muslim. All of them are planning and thinking and excited. But this person does not feel that excitement in his own heart. How about the person who, instead of feeling excitement, is wondering, how will I last in this Ramadan? How will I pass through the days of fasting? How about the one who, instead of planning how many Qur'an khatams he can finish, this one is wondering, can I even do anything extra of the Qur'an? How about the one who is struggling with sin right now when there's two days left and they still have issues in their personal lives? They might still be struggling with substance abuse. They might still be drinking the haram, eating the haram, looking at the haram. And two days are left and they're wondering, where am I in all of this excitement? Is something wrong with me? Am I not a believer? Do, not, do I not have iman? Today's khutbah is meant for that person. Today's khutbah is a reminder for the one who is struggling and who does not share in the excitement that everybody else seems to share. And the purpose of this khutbah is to raise our hopes and to feel a sense of encouragement and to remind us, O oh Muslim, that Ramadan is not just for the awliya. It is not just for the muttaqoon. It is not just for the salihin. It is not just for the righteous. Ramadan is for the sinner. It is in fact primarily meant for me and you, those that are sinning day and night. Ramadan is not just meant, yes, of course, the righteous will go higher and good for them. But the primary purpose of Ramadan, the main audience of Ramadan, is me and you who are struggling in our daily lives, who recognize we are fallen short, who understand our sins have overwhelmed us, and Ramadan is meant to give us a sense of hope. Ramadan is meant to give us a sense of optimism that indeed Allah's rahmah can and shall and will reach us. O Muslim who is struggling with fulfilling the daily wajibat, O Muslim who has still not yet mastered the five daily salawat, O Muslim who is still drinking that which is haram, looking at porn that is haram, struggling with unethical ways in business that are haram. Will you and I not, when Ramadan comes, change our lifestyle even just a little bit? Will we not at least observe the fast of Ramadan? In these hot days that are about to come, will you and I not stop eating and drinking from Fajr until Maghrib? And our co-workers are wondering, you really cannot eat and drink? And we say, yes, not even a drop of water. Will we not monitor our eyes, our tongue? We might not be perfect. We might still fall into sin. But we and I, you and I, we both know in this month, every one of us, we raise our Iman bar even by a little bit. Every one of us, we put in some extra effort. Every one of us, we cut back on some of the sins that we do. And I say to you, that very raising of the bar, that very effort, even if it is minimal compared to others, the fact that you do it, indicates that you have taqwa of the heart. And it is that taqwa that will bring about blessings. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَن يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِن تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Whoever shows respect to the signs of Allah's majesty, whoever shows respect to the sha'air of Allah, 
that is a sign that that person has taqwa of the heart. Anything that is a sha'ir of Allah, the Quran is a sha'ir of Allah. The Kaaba is a sha'ir of Allah. Ramadan is of the sha'ir of the signs of Allah. If we change our lifestyles during Ramadan, and every one of us inshallah does that. If we try to cut back our sins even by a little bit, if we observe the ritual of fasting, if we are more punctual in our daily salawat, this very action of changing our lifestyle is an indication that our pulse is there. Our iman is alive. Our spiritual heart is beating. And if we are indicating this, then insha'Allah ta'ala, inna rahmatallahi qareebun min al muhsineen. Allah's rahmah is always close to those who do good. O Muslim, indeed it is good to be of the awliya. Nobody is saying you shouldn't be. It is good to be of the muttaqoon. It is good to be of the salihun. But your ultimate competition is not with other people. Your ultimate competition in Ramadan is with your own self. You need to beat yourself and tomorrow has to be better than yesterday. That is the ultimate race of Ramadan. Ramadan is not meant to compete with the righteous, with the top 1% of the ummah. Ramadan is meant for cleansing for me and you. Ramadan is meant so that even the sinner is reintroduced to the pleasure of the worship of Allah. So that even the fasiq understands there is great joy in sajda in the middle of the night. So that even the one who is drunk outside of Ramadan understands the joy of worship is greater than the joy of being drunk. Ramadan is meant to reintroduce us to spirituality. Ramadan is meant to open up the doors of Allah's mercy. O oh Muslim, do you not just hear what our blessed Prophet wasallam said? What did he say? On every single night, Allah shall free manifold people, more than you can count, from the fire of hell. And that will happen every single night of Ramadan. He did not say, Allah will take the righteous to the Firdaus Al-A'la, even though that will happen. He did not say the top 10% will become the top 1%, even though that will also happen. He told us those that were sinners, those that were destined for punishment because their lifestyles were so far from the religion, Allah will open up doors of mercy on them. And Allah will change their lives. And Allah will bless them. And Allah will accept their repentance. And so in Ramadan, they will change from a life of evil to a life of piety from a life of sin to a life of virtue. And that will happen every single night. So I say to you, O oh sinner, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. Your sins are nothing. Allah's mercy is infinite. I say to you, O oh one who finds himself or herself far from the religion, do not fear, do not worry. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will judge you based upon the end and not based upon the beginning. As long as you strive for piety, as long as you put in the effort to raise your ranks, as long as you show Allah that you want to be forgiven, then you shall be forgiven. It is not the quantity of worship that will bring about Allah's pleasure. It is the quality of your subservience, the quality of your humility, the quality of your sincerity, the quality of your repentance. Do not trivialize any good deed that you do. O Muslim, we all know some people finish two, three, four, ten Ram khatim Qur'ans in one Ramadan. We all know they are righteous. They are in Saf al-Awwal in every single Salah. And you look at them and Shaitan comes to you and says, I can never be like them. Forget about it. But I say to you, that is a tactic of Shaitan. Do not compete with the top 1%. If you find yourself struggling at the bottom, then at least be in the ranks of the Musalleen and you shall gain Allah's mercy. At least show up as much as you can and Allah's mercy will encompass you. If you cannot finish one whole Quran, finish half the Quran, finish 10 Jews, finish 5 Jews, finish Surah Al-Baqarah, do something that you have not done outside of this month. 
Allah is not interested in the quantity. Allah wants to see the effort. Put in some effort. A Muslim who is struggling with addiction, with substance abuse. If in this month you give up that addiction, you give up that substance abuse, you have demonstrated to Allah, you love Allah more than you love this haram substance. And Allah might forgive you simply by showing that you love Him and you respect Ramadan. Do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. Do not lose hope in Allah's maghfirah. Allah forgives all sins. And the purpose of Ramadan, O sinner, is to cause you to understand and realize that Allah is ever near and Allah is ever merciful and Allah is ever forgiving. O Muslim, do you not realize that giving up hope of Allah's mercy is a bigger sin than any sin you and I can possibly do? Do you not realize that thinking Allah cannot forgive me is a bigger thought crime the crime of thinking Allah cannot forgive me is a bigger crime than any action and any deed that you can do. Why? Because no matter what deed you do, that is your deed. But when you accuse Allah of being stingy in His mercy, when you say, my sins are more than Allah's mercy, you have limited the infinite mercy of Allah. And you have accused the Rahman of having no Rahmah, the Rahim of not being able to show compassion. You have accused the one who says, Inna Allaha jami'a. Allah forgives all sins. You have accused him of saying, but he won't forgive my sin. And that is a bigger sin than any sin you and I can possibly do in our personal lives. O oh Muslim, I remind you, that Ramadan is meant to raise your ranks up. Allah has facilitated everything for you. The doors of Jannah are open. The doors of Jahannam are shut. All of the evil shayateen are chained up. Every night Allah's rahmah is coming down. The whole society turns towards Allah. The whole world is now in a spiritual state. And all of this is meant so that even the one who's not that pious, they shall be dragged by the current of piety. Even the one who is struggling, when they look around and they feel the ambience and they smell the air of Ramadan, even that person smells the fragrance and they are pushed forward. Even though outside of Ramadan, they would not be pushed forward. And I say to you, do not be discouraged. Even if you're dragging at the back, even if you're in the last rows when you come to the masjid, you are still here. And this is a part of Allah's mercy. O Muslim, do whatever you can. Try your best that Ramadan is a transformative month. This is the goal, that you end Ramadan on a better note than when you began Ramadan. That is the ultimate goal. And yes, wallahi, it is good if you're in the top 1%. I'm not trivializing or making fun of that. But I am saying, if you're not in the top 1, if you're not in the top 10, as long as you're with the group of Muslims, as long as you are fasting, as long as you are praying, as long as you are demonstrating extra piety in this month, then insha'Allah ta'ala, you are amongst the group that Allah will forgive. Give. Have good thoughts of Allah. Be optimistic. Do not let shaitan overpower you with pessimism. Do not let shaitan allow you to feel a sense of being downtrodden. No, Allah's rahmah is not going to come to you based upon how many hours you stand in tahajjud. Allah's rahmah will come to you based upon the state of your heart, based upon the state of your qalb. And so you approach Allah with a humble heart. You confess and recognize your own shortcomings. You ask Allah to bless you and you put in what whatever effort you can, 5%, 10%, 15%, put in whatever effort you can, but you must be consistent from the beginning to the end. Keep on pushing forward. Do not give up after 5-10 days. Do not give up in the middle of the month because the last 10 days is the end of the marathon. The last 10 days when you see the finish line is when you must put in the spurt and be your best in those last 10 days. And if you do so, then inshaAllah ta'ala, this month will be the blessed month for you. O Muslim, do you not know what our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said? Even the smallest deed of Ramadan will be rewarded 70, 100 times more. The smallest deed that you do in these days and nights, you will get much more than any other day and night. Do you not know what we know about Laylatul Qadr? One night in this month is equivalent to multiple lifetimes of good deeds. So you say Astaghfirullah on that night, it is as if you are saying Astaghfirullah for an entire lifetime. And that night is one of the last 10 odd nights. Those five nights, spend extra in worship. Do whatever you can from now put it in your schedule from now if you can take off holidays if you're able to or even change your schedule such that those five nights you put in some extra effort 
And the very fact that you want to put in effort, the very fact that you want Allah's mercy will guarantee, inshaAllah, that you will get Allah's mercy. O Muslim, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever, when, thinks, when thinking of his good deeds becomes happy, and when thinking of his sins becomes sad, that person is a mu'min. In other words, the fact that you are happy at the good you've done and you're sad at the evil you're done, this is an indication your heart is spiritually alive. At least you have iman. So do not allow shaitan to make you feel like a hypocrite when alhamdulillah Ramadan is demonstrating you have iman. Put your trust in Allah. Put your hope in Allah. Raise the bar. Have the highest of expectations. And even if you know you're not going to win the race in the top 1%, even if you know you're not going to be of the first batches to pass in this race of Ramadan, as long as you finish the race, you are successful. As long as you finish the race. And how do you finish the race? Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us three opportunities to finish that race. Number one, man sama ramadana iman and wahtisaban ghufira law ma taqaddama bin dhambi. This is the lowest level. Whoever fasts in the days of Ramadan shall have all of his previous sins forgiven. That's the lowest level. Surely you and I can get to that level. By fasting, we obviously mean you're praying as well and you're doing the other major, major uh, fara'id of Islam. Whoever fasts during the days of Ramadan, that is the lowest bar. Who amongst us will not be able to achieve that? Number two, man qama Ramadan. Whoever prays every single night with iman and expecting Allah's reward shall have all of the sins forgiven. This is a higher level now. It is not obligatory to pray qiyam every night. But whoever does so shall have a double guarantee. And number three, man qama laylatul qadr. Whoever, whoever prays on the night of qadr, whoever puts in extra effort, those last 10 nights, if you put in your most, utmost, and out the whole year, your utmost should be in those last 10 nights, shall have all of the previous sins forgiven. These are the three opportunities, and that's why the bar is so low. Who can possibly not pass in the month of Ramadan? And that is why our Prophet wasallam had some very harsh words for those who reach Ramadan and are not able to have their sins forgiven. He said, whoever reaches Ramadan and whoever lives to see Ramadan, and does not have all of his sins forgiven, may that person perish, may that person perish, may that person perish. Meaning, there is no hope for you if Ramadan doesn't provide you that hope. And we say, never did the Prophet ﷺ have such harsh words, but the reality is, the reason why those words are so harsh, because the bar is so low. And if you're not going to be better in Ramadan, you're not going to be better in any other month. And the good news, alhamdulillah, we all are better in Ramadan. We all put in some effort in Ramadan. Wallahi, even the most far non-practicing Muslim, you would think they have no iman left. Come Ramadan, and all of a sudden, they, they find something, and they do a little bit extra. This is the barakah, the blessings of Ramadan. If the one who never shows his face in the masjid, if the one who never opens the Quran throughout the year, if the one involved in every major sin, when Ramadan comes, all of a sudden, Sudden, they start coming to the masjid and they minimize their sin and they read and listen to the Quran if that person changes his or her life then how about me and you who are trying our best outside of the month so O Muslim la taqnatu min rahmatillah la taqnatu min rahmatillah la taqnatu min rahmatillah do not despair of the mercy of Allah do not give up hope of Allah's rahmah do not despair that Allah can forgive you Allah can and Allah shall and Allah Allah will forgive you, but on that one condition that you turn to Him, wanting forgiveness. As this Ramadan is coming, as Ramadan is only two days away, and you find yourself, I'm not as enthused as everybody else. I'm not in the forefront of the saf. You know what? I wish you were, and I wish I were. But the fact that you're not at the forefront, do not think you are a failure. Do not think there is no hope. Do not think you will not do anything this Ramadan. The very fact you are with the Musalleen, the very 
fact you are with the Sa'imin, the very fact that, that you are with those who are observing the Sha'air of Allah indicates that you have Iman. And if you have Iman in this month and you put in some extra in this month, then indeed our Prophet ﷺ has said that Allah has guaranteed to forgive anybody who fasts during the days of Ramadan, anybody who strives extra during the night, and anybody who prays during the last 10 nights. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and may he make us of those who his verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness. You as well ask him for his the ghafoor and the rahman. Alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is his aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and he hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, there are certain rituals that should be emphasized more in the month of Ramadan. And of course, many of us, we immediately think of the fast of Ramadan, and there is no doubt that is of the top of the list. But there is a ritual, and there is a good deed, that Allah mentions in the Quran more directly linked to Ramadan than the fast of Ramadan. And that is the ritual of reciting the Quran itself. Allah emphasizes during this month the recitation of the Quran more than He emphasizes the fast of Ramadan. We just recited Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al Quran. The month of Ramadan is when the Quran was revealed. The primary association of Ramadan is with the Qur'an. Then after one paragraph, Allah says, whoever witnesses the month should fast the month. Fasting is mentioned after the Qur'an is mentioned. Three times in the Qur'an, Allah links this month and links Laylatul Qadr with the Qur'an. إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةٍ مُبَارَكَ إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Three verses, Allah talks about the Qur'an coming down during this time. So the linkage of the Qur'an with Ramadan is stronger in the Qur'an than the linkage of Ramadan with Siyam. And therefore, throughout our history, from the very beginning of time, the Ummah has understood Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. And they would eagerly recite the Qur'an. They would recite it in their salawat and outside of their salawat. They would understand this is the ultimate priority. The famous scholar of Hadith, Malik ibn Anas, who is the greatest scholar in his generation and the teacher of the teacher of Imam al-Bukhari, when Ramadan would come and he would teach Hadith in the Masjid of the Prophet when Ramadan would come, he would shut his muwatta, his hadith, and he would say, this is the month of reciting the Qur'an. His teacher, Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri, one of the greatest of the students of the students of the Sahaba, his teacher would also be giving knowledge throughout the year. When Ramadan would come, he would stop his durus, he would stop his knowledge, and he would say, Ramadan is Qira'at al-Qur'an wa it'am al-ta'am. Ramadan is meant for two things, Qira'at al-Qur'an wa it'am al-ta'am. I have to read the Qur'an, and I have to feed, give sadaqah to the hungry people. Two things in Ramadan, reading the Quran and being generous. This the scholars of the past understood. And so number one ritual that must be on our agenda is to increase the recitation of the Quran. And I say to you again, to be practical and realistic. Some of you will finish three, four, five khatams of the Quran. Good for you. May Allah bless you. But I say loudly and clearly, if you cannot finish even one khatam, do not lose hope in Allah's mercy and finish half a khatam. If you cannot finish half, finish one third. If you cannot finish one third, do one fifth. In other words, do something. Do something, and whatever you do will be something of barakah. Something is infinitely better than nothing. And so every day and every night, consistently open up the book of Allah, open up a Quranic app, open up something and read the Quran. Read something that you do not read. And also understand listening to the Quran is a separate act of worship than reading the Quran. So when you're in your cars driving to work, when you're doing something in your household, put on the Quran and have it reciting in your daily, in your daily routine so that you are listening and then you are reciting. This is the first ritual. The second ritual that the Quran mentions linked to Ramadan 
is mentioned in the very verse of Shahru Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the very verse that talks about Ramadan, Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ when my servants ask you about me, tell them I am ever close to them. And I respond to the dua of the one who makes dua when he makes dua. Dua and the month of Ramadan. Dua and fasting. Dua at the time of iftar. Dua in tahajjud. Dua in taraweeh. Dua in the sajda at night. Ramadan should be a month of dua. Ramadan should be a month of raising your hands to Allah, opening your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, speaking to Allah in your language from your own way. There is no routine. There is no dua I can teach you. The best dua is the one that comes from the heart in your own language. Allah speaks all languages. Allah understands all languages. And dua can be done in any language by the unanimous consensus of all the scholars of Islam. So before you break your fast, raise Raise your hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the dua of the one who is fasting before he breaks the fast shall never be rejected. The dua of the one who is fasting before he breaks the fast shall never be rejected. So when we gather together at that time of iftar, when we have all of those delectable delights in front of us, when that smell is wafting through our nostrils and our minds are attached to the food in front of us, at that time, just for a few minutes, disconnect. Raise your hands to Allah and make sincere dua for Allah's blessings upon us, upon your families, upon the ummah. Ask Allah for hidayah. Ask Allah for mal. Ask Allah for barakah. This is of the most powerful times you can make dua. And whoever is able to make dua at that time, Allah will accept that dua. Also, duas at night, duas in tahajjud, duas in taraweeh, duas in sajdas. Every night make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another ritual that should be done. And the third ritual, because of time, I'm going to finish here, but much more can be said. So we said, number one, without a doubt, is the tilawah of the Quran. Number two is dua. And number three, another act that should be associated associated with the month of Ramadan is the act of sadaqa and charity and giving food to the hungry and being generous to the people. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam demonstrated utmost generosity during the month of Ramadan. Dedicate some amount of money from now. Try to shift your bank accounts or whatever and figure out I'm going to be giving in the first 10 days this much, the middle 10 days this much, the last 10 days this much. And small but consistent is better than one large chunk. Every few days you give some small amount and you save the biggest amount for the last 10 days and that is why many people choose to give their zakat in Ramadan and that's great to do it's not obligatory that you give zakat only in Ramadan but it is what the ummah has done and is useful if you can give zakat every Ramadan but Remember, it's not just zakat, it's also sadaqa, generosity. And it'amu ta'am is not even just money, just feeding people that are hungry, smiling in their faces, doing chores for them. And especially brothers and sisters, and with this I conclude, we cannot forget the plight of the ummah around the globe. So much is happening, subhanAllah. Of course, Gaza is on our minds, but still the solution to so many other problems has not been solved. Still, the Uyghurs are as they are. Our brothers and sisters in Kashmir, so much is happening. In Africa, the Rohingya are still in that plight. Subhanallah, the Ummah is in so much pain. And so, the very least, be generous with your du'as. Be, give sadaqa with your du'as. Raise your hands before iftar and remember the plight of the Muslims around the globe as we have those beautiful meals in front of us. Thank Allah. Wallahi, it is a blessing. You should not feel guilty for having food Allah has given you, but you should feel responsibility. You should feel a sense of blessedness. Yes, you don't need to feel guilty, but you should feel alhamdulillah Allah has given me and others don't have this so make dua for those who do not have and ask Allah to make their situation better because this is one of the things Ramadan does it connects us with the entire ummah O oh, Muslims Allah knows who will be amongst us one Ramadan from now Allah knows statistically speaking there will be people that are sitting here right now that will not be with us one Ramadan from now for some of us, this will be our last Ramadan. And none of us right now knows who that person or those people will be. And therefore, let us aim, let us strive, let us intend to make this Ramadan our best Ramadan ever. That should be our intention. Your competition is with the top 1%. Your competition is with yourself. Your competition is against you. You are your worst enemy and you're also your best ally. You need to overcome yourself and 
to be better tomorrow than you were yesterday. If you do so, then you have been successful and Ramadan has indeed been a blessed month for you. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tadna fi hadhi yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farrajta wa la daynan illa qadayta wa la maridan illa shafayta wa la asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma fill lana wa li ikhwanina ladhina sabakuna bin iman wa la taj'a fi qulubina ghilla lilladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka raufur rahim. Allahumma a'izz الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاشغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملاكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم سلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم ومن كان مريضا أو على سفر فعدة من أيام أخر يريد الله بكم اليسر ولا يريد بكم العسر ولتكملوا العدة ولتكبروا الله على ما هداكم ولعلكم تشكرون وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر, 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى مطلع الفجر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله